protect the house. What if at some point it's obvious that I'm going to be in a facility and not be able to return home? What should I do if I decide to sell my home at some okay. point? When you're in a facility and you've come to us and we've said we cannot protect your home because you're widowed and you're in the facility, uh, if we were to do anything to protect it, we would cause a period of ineligibility and you couldn't get a check immediately from the government. So the solution we might use in that setting is for you to sell your home, take the proceeds from the sale, do not gift them away, which would cause periods of ineligibility, just a waiting period to get a check. The government has rules. When you want to apply for help, they don't want you to be having assets one day, give them away the next, and then say, I'm poor and I'm here to help. So they have rules to prevent that. So when you sell your home and you want to protect the money that comes from it, you have to look at other solutions than gifting. Because in this example, you are actually in the nursing home already and you're not coming out. That was the reason for the sale. So we look at strategies involved spending money on what we call good things, things that can add value to you or to your family. In addition to spending money, we look at specialized kind of investments investments into what we call a DRA compliant note. Now I know that's a lot of words and very complicated, but that's what you hire the expert for. And the expert can take money that is excessive, more than the $2,000 that mom can have, and invest them, generally with the children, take back an asset, which we nicknamed the DRA compliant note. It is a very specialized note, it's not simply an IOU. And through the magic of planning, that note does not count towards your $2,000 limit. So that's a strategy. It's not one that works every time. There's advantages with that strategy. There's disadvantages with that strategy. The key is to figure out when it works for you, when it doesn't work for you. And again, that's why you get an expert involved in planning. Somebody who has done this many, many times before. So that is a very important problem and solution. So if you have a home and you're in the nursing home, we can't give it away. We have to figure out a better way to do it. And selling it, converting it to cash, paying your bills, and then taking the excess money you still have, more than the $2,000 you're allowed, and spending that money, and if we can't find enough places to spend it, then we move into investing it as a solution. Okay. Say I'm bound and determined to stay in my home and not go into a facility. You mentioned there are different types of ways we can protect the home. Could you go over some better or, or not so good solutions we could use? Sure. This is the situation where if somebody comes to me because they say I'm fearful that someday either myself or my husband may need care. Yes, I understand from talking to you, Tim, that I can have this house, but I know I'm going to lose it. So I want to figure out a strategy to protect the home. I'm not yet in a nursing home. Nursing home may be five, six years away. I'm doing this as an advanced planning strategy. So we have solutions that we think are good ideas and solutions that are not so good. The not so good one is the one that any advisor would tell you to do. You could go to any attorney, even an elder law attorney, and their solution they would come up with is to say, okay, your problem is you have a house. If you give the house to your daughter, you won't have a house anymore. And therefore, you won't lose the house. Well, that's a true statement. And if all we look at are the rules to get eligible to get a government check and to avoid paying back the government loan all within the rules, We've accomplished that. We could go in, we could apply for benefits, the government could pay for it, there's no house to put a lien on, and the end result is the daughter would be able to keep the house. What's wrong with that strategy? That's what lawyers have a hard time figuring out. That's where the CPA comes in. And as you know, I'm a CPA. And as a result, I understand tax law. And as a result, I would never counsel my parent to give their home to their daughter because the problem works this way. When the daughter wants to sell the house and mom has died, dad has died, they gave the house to the daughter during lifetime, when daughter sells that house, 
she's going to have to pay a capital gains tax. And that capital gains tax could be as much as 20% of the selling price of the house. So we had a strategy that worked from a asset protection point of view, but it was not coordinated very well with a tax strategy. So there are better ways to do it than just giving the home outright to your daughter. Okay, I've, I've heard you mention the phrase, um, right to change your mind agreement. What flexibility does that offer and what are the advantages of planning that way? I really like that strategy. I'm very proud of it because I invented it right here in Racine, Wisconsin and used it over 3,000 times. And it's the only strategy where you can own your own home, be in total control over it, protect it so that you don't have to sell it to pay back the government loan, make sure that your children don't lose their inheritance, and it's just a wonderful strategy. And how we design it is we don't give the home to the daughter or to your three children. We simply let you keep it. But we enter into an agreement with your daughter, or if you have three children, with the three children. And that agreement within the rules that the government has laid down will stop the government from selling your home either during your lifetime, while you're in a nursing home, or after your death. They will not sell the home. The home will be able to go to your children. It's a wonderful strategy. The advantage to that strategy, the major advantage is you keep control. Obviously, if you gave your home outright to your daughter, you've lost control. Here, you're in control. When you want to sell that home, you make the decision. If you want to get a reverse mortgage on it, you make the decision. If you want to just refinance a mortgage, you make the decision. You're in total control. We call it the right to change your mind agreement because that's what the agreement does with your children. It basically says, and it's a little complicated from the, from the perspective of the rules, but it works this way. The agreement says, mom and dad, you still own the home, Children, we own not your home, but the right to inherit the house. That's very important. That's what stops the government from selling the home when mom and dad die to have the loan that the government gave you repaid. So that's critical. But the wonderful thing about this strategy is you have much more control over it than if you gave the house away. You can even change who's going to get the inheritance. You originally gave it to three kids. All of a sudden, you're not happy with one. Just like in a will, you could disinherit somebody. You have the right to do that here. Watch this. You're not unhappy with your daughter. You gave it to three kids, but now your daughter's in the middle of a bankruptcy or the middle of a divorce. Your daughter would have problems if she tried to give the property away, but you've kept a string on it. You've kept the right to change your mind. You're not going to pull it back to yourself but you are going to be able to redistribute it to the other two kids while your daughter's going through the divorce, while your daughter's going through the bankruptcy. And then when the bankruptcy attorney or the divorce attorney tells your daughter it's okay to have assets again, mom, dad will exercise their right to change their mind and go from two kids back to three kids. So they might have originally started with three kids and because of something special that happened, we prepared a notice to send to the daughter saying, you don't have a right to inherit this home anymore. So it went from three to two, and now the problem is over. We can go from two kids to three kids. It's a wonderful solution. It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more hard to explain, harder to explain, but it does such wonderful things. And the key thing we have not even mentioned yet, the key thing is no tax bill if this home gets sold. No tax bill to the parents if it's sold during lifetime. No tax bill to the daughter or the children if it's sold after death. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful solution. And before we go on, I'd like to put in a little story of what happens when you give your house away and you lose control. And let's say you only have one child, so you gave the house to the daughter. She lives in her own home. Who's living in the house you gave to your daughter? Mom and dad are. So we're sitting there with daughter owning the house. No big problem, she's a wonderful daughter, she's gonna basically do what you want her 